I heard birds chirping there? Surely not. It's only two o'clock in the morning. That bloody cat. She's going to wreck them blinds, you know. Cost me a fortune, them bloody vertical blinds and all. Never mind. Hello, Hammerheads. Thank you for tuning in. What I'm going to talk about tonight is, um Well, basically, mm, vinyl and CDs, you know? I mean, look at this, right? Look at this. Look at this. Look at this, right? Look at this. Some brilliant, pretty albums. I mean, look at this one, right? Look at this. Baker Gerbit saw me, right? Um, brilliant album, that. First one, I think. Ginger Baker, obviously on drums. Brilliant drummer. And my all-time favourite drum solo. Is on that. Yep, Memory Lane. I can't find it on YouTube, I can't find it on Spotify, I can't find it on Groove Shark, and I can't play it because it's fucking vinyl. And the turntable I've got is like, well, I've got no connections for it or anything, so I'm not going to play it, aren't I? Unless I download it from somewhere. Well, brilliant album. There's another one, right? Look at this, look at this. Rare record, good condition. I bought that from Blackpool, Bertie Gerbert's Army again. Elgin Encounter. Brilliant album, that. Brilliant. Ginger, obviously Ginger Berger. Berger Gerbert, because he had a few projects going after he left Cream in the 70s and that. <clears throat> Mob Rules. So, it's got its moments, that. Brilliant. Second album, which featured Ronnie James Dio on vocals. God, I got that in 1983. It was released in 81. And then you've got, see this, right? That was a free album, what you got. You remember the sounds music maggot there? Well, music paper. It was like three of them at the time. Light Rivals was Melody Maker, New Musical Express, and Sounds. And then end is obviously, why, near CDs and out, so, oh, they give you a free album on it sometimes. It's got loads of bands on it, right? The best thing on here is, where is it, where is it, where is it? I don't believe this. There it are. I thought it was the last track, but it's not. It's track six on side one. Charlie. That's the name of the band. Don't look back. You know, look for that song on YouTube and, and click on it and listen to it. Because the lyrics are so brilliant. 1977. Don't look back. It's all about, um, you know... You might have had a, you might think you've had a good life and you listen to the radio sometimes and you hear an old hit that reminds you of your childhood and you go, oh God, this reminds me of, oh, but you don't, you always forget about the bad times that you had, do you know what I mean? So it's like, there's the chorus, don't look back, live now, I mean, that's perfect. Kate Bush, I remember when that came out. Same time as Judy Zook's album, The Cat Is Out. Same kind of cover, really. Weird album, that. Good album, but... Mm. Oh, ooh. I love Kate Bush, me. And this one here, right? Look at this. Nothing to hide. Blackfoot Sue, right? Brilliant album, this. I bought it. Why? I swapped it off a lad. Them two, obviously, are brothers. You know what I mean? It's not a mirror image, I promise. <laughs> but this.
this one is in like a kind of deep red vinyl. You'll not be able to see it from there, but it definitely is. If you look up to the light, oh, it looks like bloody black currant jam it does. Yeah, brilliant album that. There's only a handful of songs on YouTube off there you can actually come across. But that's a beauty of YouTube when it comes to music because you know you look for a song one time and next week it'll be there. There'll be loads of versions of it. It's a bit like Spotify. The Pentangle History. You see I love them. Brilliant band them. Got loads of fucking albums on vinyl by these you know. Like, you know, British folk band, bit of jazz in there as well. But what I'm trying to say is, right, uh, CDs, right? Yeah, one of my favourite bands, Hawkwind, Levitation. I've seen them a few times. Caravan, one of my favourite bands. I hope they come to Newcastle soon, and hopefully they will be very shortly. Camel, another great band. Brilliant album. The second one from 1974, Mirage. Andromeda, 1969. I've got that on vinyl. And this is very, very heavy for its bloody day. I mean, John Can on guitar and vocals. Atomic Rooster, you know what I mean? There's only three members, and it's like, Christ, we're a racket. It's almost punky in a way. 1969! Spooky Tooth, great album that. Brilliant album, especially the title track, The Mirror. And that, look at this, look at this, right? Look at this. I've got a really rare version. It moves and all that. Because <laughs> it's like one of them kind of ones. <sighs> My point is, right? Yeah, vinyl versus CDs. But the thing is, right? Vinyl was a lot better in my view. Oh, yeah. Sounded raw, sounded good, sounded how it should have sounded. Bring it out on the disc, right? It's like, um, ooh, they eliminate all the like rawness. So you're left with something that, well, that's not how the band intended the sound to go out. It's like, it's cheating in a way. Then, do you remember in the early 90s? When them digital cassettes come out? Oh, they didn't. Well, they're obsolete. They became obsolete within a few months of being launched, you know what I mean? Because they weren't very good, let's face facts here. You know, so we've got to the stage of a compact disc, right? Even Bruce Dickinson will back me up on this. Because I've heard his rants loads of times when he he's DJ on a few stations and that. Banging on about how much better vinyl was. It fucking is. It always will be. The needle sometimes comes and it sticks and it jumps and whatever. And you get smudges on it and they get ruined dead easily and damaged quite quickly. But CDs, they're lying. Because, right, fair enough. Let's stop at CDs. Let's not take any further steps apart from CDs is the end of the line, right? Right? Right. So, you're, you've already eliminated the rawness and the hissing and all the rest of it. blah de blah de blah That's fine. Leave it there. Because if, you know, technology does move very quickly and I'm all for it. But not when it comes to bloody well music. You have to have talent. You have to have skill. And you have to have rawness. That's what it's all about. If you make an album on vinyl, Christ, 
30, 40, whatever years ago, right? You want to maintain and retain that rawness. That's how the band really sounded. That's how they wanted the public to want them to, you know, they wanted them to like, wait, this is us. This is how we sound. And the music industry is like changed all that and, oh, now we've done this. We've improved the sound quality. Well, that's fair enough. But what about the rawness? I'll keep using that word and underlining it because I like raw. I like a raw sound in music. I mean, that's why I've always liked British rock music better than American mu rock music. Because there's that underlying rawness there. And it's always been there. It's not anymore. It's changed now, the industry way. Well, that's my point of this, isn't it? It's just all different now, and it does me head in, man. So, if they try and improve on the CD, that's it. I'm going to get a great big, gigantic, enormous fucking knife out of the kitchen, right? And slip me throat. Because I've got a big passion for music. It's my biggest passion, actually. It's it. The jam bugless. And um well that's not right. Cause now we're listening to the things, right? All this shit that's in the fucking charts, well most of it. It's like um they're not real singers, it's not the real voice, it's all modified, it's all doctored up, you know what I mean? It's, they don't sound like that really. You know, that's not fucking talent. Yeah, a few of them are, but not a lot of them. I mean, Britney Spears fucking miming and that. I mean, she's been caught out a few times. She hasn't got any talent. She's got a nice arse and she's blonde. And that's what the fucking public recognise more than anything else. They don't even see talent. They see it through that look, like looking through a fucking window, you know what I mean? It's, <sighs> Leave music alone. Why? In a few years time, record shops, they'll cease to exist. I know my girlfriend, Jan Bugless, Um when she says HMV or the massive then, Bloody Virgin or the massive then, they'll go eventually, mark my words. I mean, look at our price, them pretty bloody big and volume and all the rest of them they've all gone it's only a matter of time but uh, these two giants will go on all because everyone's downloading now man wait before long cds won't even be made not like musical ones you know plenty of blank ones so you can download them and all that but that's about you know that'll be all you'll get you go to a record shop, you ask for Bon Jovi's latest album, and it's like, Oh, I'm sorry, mate, it's just gone straight out of dog download. That's what it would be like. I mean, these game shops, even. Everyone's downloading bloody games now. I mean, you need keys and passwords and bloody patches and all that, but people can do it. Simple as that. But... Oh, God. What has music ended up as? It's like, you know, it's like, um, it's ended up like a dinosaur, hasn't it? Proper music, I mean. Proper, proper, raw. Somebody playing the drums. Somebody playing a mean bass. Preferably a Rickenbacker or something. Or a Fender. Somebody playing a brilliant Gibson SG guitar and a great vocalist and sometimes in most cases a Hammond keyboard player synthesizer bloody blah, blah makings of a great band combined with brilliant songwriting you've got all the 
brilliant ingredients of an excellent group. Loads of brilliant fucking music in there. No, but the industry has to try and stamp it into the ground, owner. Because all for money. I'm not talking about bulls here, Jim Bone, you know. Not pound for points. Anyway, I've had enough of this shit now, Hammerheads. I bid you good night, Hammerheads. Good night. Mm.